Hi everybody and thank you again for watching another episode of Gaffer and Gear. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about the Aperture MC Pro firmware version 2.0 update because this is quite a substantial update. Number one, we've got 16-bit DMX profiles. Number two, we don't have that irritating delay when we're using DMX queuing. Number three, we have a substantially increased color gamut in our color modes, well beyond what you'd expect from an RGBWW light. And number four is the light now has a HSIC plus mode in it. So you can dial in a color temperature, a green magenta correction, and then saturate a color in manually. We'll also be comparing the light's new color capabilities against a Roscoe DMG dash and an Astera Hydra panel. And we'll also be comparing the light's DMX Q ability against the Roscoe and against the Astera product as well. Let's start off with the pros and cons and get the cons out of the way first. So if like me, you like using MC Pros as a candle effect, I would hold off on putting this update in until they fix the effect. With the older software, the candle effect was a yellow and orange. In the new firmware, it's pink. This is something they're racing to fix as we speak. Now, I'm not sure if the next fault is to do with the blackout software that I use or to do with the software in the light, but if I'm in the ultimate mode, and I want to run the explosion effect, I can't manually trigger it. Now, the last issue for me with the software is if you're running the candle or fire effect over DMX. Now, the issue for me, this is in the ultimate mode 16-bit, is that it's obviously repeating the same program cycle over and over again. And that cycle is way too short. It's very obvious after watching it for about 30 seconds that it's just repeating the same pattern over and over again. Now let's get into the pros, and one of the big pros is the extended color gamut you get out of the light with the firmware update. It's like you've got a completely new light. So how did they achieve this? Well, the light is RGBWW, red, green, blue, warm white, and cool white. But the warm white emitter by itself is very yellow. So they decided to try and mix this warm white emitter into the colors to generate colors using RGB and yellow, not just RGB. The four MC Pros on the left side of the screen are running on the older firmware. They are receiving their commands via CRMX and they are set to the Mode 3 8-bit CCT HSI crossover profile. The lights on the right side of the screen have the firmware update and are using the new 16-bit HSIC profile. This test is done over one minute using blackout DMX software. Now, just to note, I'm not going to be displaying the color vector information on the screen because the older firmware has a DMX smoothing delay. So I can't line up the color vectors precisely. So the idea of this test is to show that the lights with the newer firmware have a larger range of colors in their HSI mode than they did with the previous firmware. Let's start the test now. And the difference is most noticeable with yellows, ambers, and golds. And there is also a huge amount of difference as we transfer from our yellows to our greens. So the MC Pro clearly isn't a basic RGBWW light anymore, but neither are the other lights that we commonly use in this form factor. So I've decided to do a test showing the new color characteristics of this light versus the other lights that we commonly use. Now, I don't shoot gaffering gear on an Ari Alexa. So if I've noticed that the color on camera doesn't match the color that I'm seeing by eye, I've taken a note. We have the MC Pro with its new firmware. 
we have the DMG Dash, which uses red, green, blue, lime, amber, and white. And we also have the Hydra Panel, which uses red, green, blue, mint, and amber. Let's start the test now. Now, when it comes to running the light manually, there are a few subtle differences. Number one, you can adjust your brightness in 0.1% increments now. The operating modes are largely the same, except for one difference. HSI has been replaced with the HSI C plus mode. In the HSI C plus mode, you can set the CCT at which you desaturate your colors to. You can have a green and magenta value added to that. You can saturate in a color with 1000 increments of adjustment, and you can select your color hue with fine adjustments of 0.1 degrees. And the next improvement is the DMX profiling. With the previous firmware, you only had these 11 DMX modes, which were all 8-bit. Now with the new firmware update, you've got 24 DMX modes. And of course, the big improvement, 16-bit DMX profiling. Now, the one mode that I'm super impressed with is the 16-bit ultimate mode. Now, I don't use ultimate modes very much with other lights because ultimate modes for me have two problems. Number one, they're usually just 8-bit. And number two, there's no crossover modes inside the ultimate mode. So for example, an ultimate mode might have a CCT mode, it might have a HSI mode, and it might have an RGB mode, but it doesn't have a combination mode that enables me to cross from say a white light to a colored light. I can only do hard switching. Now this ultimate mode has crossover modes. We have a CCT RGB mode, a CCT mode, CCT and HSI mode, an RGB mode, a HSI mode where you can select the Kelvin at which you desaturate to. You've got your gels mode where you can select between Lee and Roscoe gels. We've got an XY mode, we've got our source mode, and we've got our effects mode, where we can have club lights, paparazzi, lightning effect, TV effect, candle, fire, strobe, explosion, faulty bulb, pulsing, welding, cop car, color chase, party lights, and the firework effect. Now here's the plus for this mode. Not only is it 16-bit and has crossovers, so there's no disadvantage in me staying in the ultimate mode, but it only uses 16 channels. Now your crossover modes use 11 to 12 channels. So for that additional four to five channels, you get a lot more capability. Now, in my opinion, the most important improvement on these is the DMX queuing. The previous firmware had a baked in smoothing with a one second delay. That was absolutely irritating. Now that delay has gone and the smoothing is still just as good. So let's do a comparison of this with other lights to see how they've improved it. We have the MC Pro with its version 2.0 firmware. It is running off its 16-bit HSI C Plus profile. Its dimmer is set to linear and it is set to its minimum smoothing option. Next to that, we have the DMG Dash. The DMG Dash is running in a CCT HSI crossover profile. Its dimmer is set to linear and it is also set to its minimum smoothing option. We also have an Astera Hydra panel, which is running off a 16-bit CCT HSI crossover profile. Its dimming curve and smoothing options are set to the defaults. The lights are receiving their commands at the same time via blackout software which is transmitting over a hardwired Cerise 4 Universe transmitter. Let's start off with instant on-off commands.
Now let's take a look at some half second cues. Now for some one second cues. Now for some two and a half second cues. And some five second cues. Now let's have a look at CCT transitions between 5600 Kelvin and 3200 Kelvin, starting off with instant transitions. Now some half second transitions. Now for some one second transitions. Now for some two and a half second transitions. and some five second transitions. Now let's have a look at a transition between a CCT and a color hue, starting with instant commands. Now for some half second commands. Now for some one second commands. Now for some two and a half second commands. And now for some five second commands.
And now some random brightness inputs. Now it's amazing what difference a firmware update can make. This light is now way more usable for me because of the DMX queuing and it does have some fantastic yellows and golds that it can create now. So well done Aperture on the update. Please go through your back catalogue now and fix up the other lights. See you on the next episode of Gaffering Gear.